right, so we're going to jump into a lesson. It's going to be a lesson for Soraka in Gold 2. One thing immediately that I noticed as we're loading into the screen for this on Mediocres is going to be the Summon Airy, but taking it with the Resolve Tree. I don't recommend this in most cases just because the Resolve Tree doesn't give you a lot of power in the early game lane phase, and usually when you take Airy, you want to be dealing a lot of damage. So in most cases, whenever I do do the Resolve Tree with the uh, spell thieves. I want to be actively trading and forcing a lot of my HP down So what I'm going to do is kind of just show you the rune setup that I always prefer to run Whenever I am playing this more offensive poke heavy kind of rune setup So for the most part we're going to opt into the airy as we see here with mana flow ban Then absolute focus and scorch This gives us the most amount of damage in the laning phase Which is pretty much the primary focus when you're taking something like airy You're focused on trading and losing your HP and taking their HP down after that, we're going to take Cosmic Insight and Biscuits. This is really good for keeping your health topped off so that you can you know, continuously abuse the absolute focus in trades in the laning phase. And usually in most cases, I'm going to take double the adapt adaptive force. Since you're against a Senate a support also, then I would just opt into the armor pretty much every time in this regard. So for just like jumping in before we even go into the laning phase, these are the runes that I recommend you use whenever you're against an offensive lane opponent. Uh, this is most likely going to be what you do uh, setup wise, and then you're just going to parlay that into Sork, uh, into Lucidity Boots, into an Athene's Unholy Grail, which gives you the most power in the early game. Now, if you're against something that's something that's all linny. So let's use the example of Leona, and you're not very comfortable playing aggressively in the early stages. You know, you're scared you might die, uh, play over aggressive. You don't want to, you know, play into the hand and always have to be aggressive and potentially leave yourself open to ganks. This is the setup that I like to run for this. Um, so to kind of tackle it, we'll just use the example of Leona, right? Uh, Guardian's actually really, really great at keeping you alive, and then you're just going to take Font of Life because Demolish and Shield Bash are both like kind of useless. You can make some some excuse for Demolish, but the main reason why you're taking this already, right, is you want to play defensively and kind of behind enemy lines. So we're just opting into as many things that keep you alive and then getting the Revitalize. After that, I found that I really like Taste of Blood for the little extra HP and the item CDR. So the build path for this is going to look a lot different than the one that I just recommended for um, whenever you're playing Soraka and you're going for the airy in this case I would pretty much always be rushing either redemption or McHale's just depending on how much crowd control there is and getting the other one afterwards uh, If you didn't know you get triple multiplier value on the extra healing and shielding whenever using redemption So you see 5% here that means it's 15% on redemption and then you get an additional 10% when they're under 40% so that's another 30%. So just revitalize the talent is 45% extra healing on uh, anyone who's under 40% with the redemption. So I really, really like this setup. And since the goal is to play defensively, you're just going to opt into the CDR because you no longer have CDR on your uh, support items. And then you just go Relic. You go Relic Shield, and that will actually help you a lot in being able to play defensively uh, without having to worry too much about being pressured in the laning phase. <sighs> Also, uh, as a side note, for the most part, it's okay in this game because they warded, but usually whenever you're playing support, you always want to walk to this ramp right here and spot here while your AD carry spots here. That way you can see if any invades are coming. Now, if your AD carry doesn't spot for whatever reason, just make sure to give ground so you don't get all in by them walking through the tri-bush and potentially ganking you. Huh. So, we'll just jump to... After the leash, we're walking to lane right now. Don't see anybody in the lane. And so we're just going to get into the lane right now. Now one thing to note in this lane phase is you're against multiple people who can poke you and auto attack you. So you just want to be using your Q and trading anytime that your Q is healing you. And then just looking to step back afterwards. Which was a really good trade by you right there. Once you got the hit confirmed, you walk forward and you auto attacked. Now one thing to note too is when you're activating a lot of these trades... Make sure to be using your health potion early. That way you can continuously have a good flow of HP so that you can stay healthy. So pretty much what ended up happening here, it seemed okay, but it's not really necessary. Is they're actually able to all in you just because you're all low on HP. So kind of what I want to tackle right here is just making sure that you make good muscle memory of using your health potion to keep yourself topped off. 
A uh, reminder that every time you level up too, that when you have the potion healing and you're a lot higher to your HP, it's going to make your healing potions even more valuable. So what I mean by that is, is when you use a healing potion that heals 150 on someone who has 500 health versus someone who has 650 health, obviously the proportions are, it heals more when you're lower eight, when you're lower level, right? But a higher percentage conversion rate. So the first Q is actually really, really good afterwards because you get the auto attacks off. And now you're just fishing for a second Q, which is fine. But what what should happen is, is because you have the wave pushing and you've hit the Q, you no longer need to trade autos anymore in this scenario because you've already lost too much HP. And one thing that you should be doing now, and it's also a big reason why I think biscuits are incredibly powerful, is you'd already have access to a biscuit right here to be able to pop yourself off. A thing to note too, if you didn't know, biscuits heal based on the HP that it starts at. So if you had a biscuit right now and you popped it and then you popped a potion, the biscuit would be healing as if you were missing 50% of your health the entire time. So it would heal you for a substantial amount. Also great for the early stages while you're building up your mana flow band to solve a lot of mana issues. So once you hit this Q, what you should have done is pop a potion and just walk into this brush. You shouldn't be continuously pushing this trade and losing a lot of extra HP. And another thing to note too is, is, as the wave is coming in here, you need to be abusing the vision advantage that you have right here. So as you can see, like they've fallen back, you have the push advantage, you should be using a health potion to top yourself off, and just abuse the fact that you can sit in the wave. Because right now, even though, even though you end up getting a sumps trade advantage, there's no reason for yourself to be this far up. Because now you've created what's called a trade triangle. <clears throat> Whenever someone can create a trade triangle, it's always advantageous for whoever is getting focused. So as you can kind of see right here, right, your AD carry is just really far back. You're here where the AD carry is, and you, this is where the support is. So you're actually playing way too far aggressive. So what you should have done is just be sitting in the brush, let your advantage with the wave start getting pushed, and if they start hitting the minions, then you start hitting the minions and step back to make sure you're next to your AD carry. That way you can hit level 2 and start poking with your E. Another thing to note too is when you're shooting your Qs, you're shooting them basically incredibly close to the opponents, which is also creating a lot of trade triangles in this regard. It's why you lose so much HP when you're trading on people. One thing that I always suggest you do is when you're shooting Qs, it has a travel distance. So pay attention to minion HP and then shoot it in the way that they need to walk into to get last hits. This will not only protect you from getting trade triangled, especially against two ranged champions, but it'll also allow you to hit the Q and safely heal yourself up. So this was good that you at least got your barrier off, they flashed, use ignite on you, and all of their sums are down. But now you're at a pretty big health disadvantage and you're going to eat both potions, but you can't play that aggressive right now. Fortunately, the MF just basically walks right into it, and uh, you now have a little bit of pressure, but there's no reason for you to lose that much HP, especially with how good the trading went early. So now that you've hit level 2, you have that silence. You can just dump that silence. I like it. <clears throat> but in situations like this, once you've hit the silence, there's no reason to, for you to use the Q because there's no reason for the MF to walk up. So just pay attention to minion health. If you instead hold your Q and just wait for a minion HP to lower and then him to walk up, then you can zone them away. Also, another thing to note too that's kind of just common now that I'm seeing it is utilize brush advantage. You don't always have to be harassing someone. Just creating pressure in the lane can also be where you position. So you force them back. They've used most of their summoners. Take this brush here. Make it uncomfortable for the MF to walk in. It's way easier to hit any skill shot basically at all if it comes from Fog of War rather than if you're walking straight at them. Because right now by walking up like this, correct, you're creating a, you're creating space behind him, but he also knows how to duke it because he can see where you're physically standing. So that should be just an easy E. You want to be using your E on cooldown, basically, just for damage and harass. So in that situation, you should have shot your E a little bit earlier just to cycle it as fast as possible. Your goal should be basically to try to have your E your silence off cooldown used every time because it lines up pretty well with the uh, mana flow band cooldown too so it's really really good in that regard <clears throat> oh i don't even think you have man oh you don't you have nimbus cloak in this lane i would have never taken nimbus cloak in this lane and, and you have celerity yeah, you've, you've lost a lot of damage actually just taking those runes. I didn't even recognize that. Okay, okay.
Same thing as before, right? Shooting the cues when the player needs to be coming up for minions is how you want to both basically do everything. Since you've pushed the trades and you have the health advantage now, by the way, you don't need to be shooting cues at max range. You should just be sitting near the minions and just looking for auto attack trades and cycling your E. And then anytime, see how the minions are low, that's when you should be shooting your cues, which you did right there, which is a good job. This is one of the problems with the rune setup that I've already seen you running is basically you've already ran out of steam in this lane when actually this is where this is where like it's the most important part where you need to be doing damage to the player and just creating a lot of pressure. Fortunately for you, your AD carry is popping and you just like one shot him. So in a situation like this, you should just ward, walk up, cue this minion wave so you can get it all the way into the turret. It doesn't even matter about this player because you should be focused on pushing the wave. So in these kinds of scenarios, you should pretty much be asking yourself like, what, what do you need to do after that kill happens? Right? You've killed this player. Your goal should just be push it into the turret. You're too worried about getting all this vision and this information that doesn't actually impact anything at all. The first thing that you should do is once this wave crashes, is just look to push the wave. You've got your level 2 Q, you can walk up, Q the range minions, just get it all the way into the turret. Because what ends up happening here is this is another 5-6 seconds of basically nothing happening in your lane. And then because of that, right, you don't have the wave fixed. And now what's going to happen is, is although you've escaped the gank, now this wave is actually frozen on this side because you're not pushing the wave and getting it into the turret. And now you're basically left with a couple of options and one of them is to just stay in the lane and try and get it all the way to the turret. But now you have to stay for basically another extra wave and it puts you a lot more in danger and ruins what a lot of people like to call tempo, which is just your ability to get back on the map and kind of make decisions for what the game is going, what's going on in the game. So, good barrier here, good use of your heal. Hard to truly decide on what skill you should have used. I think I would have probably used the silence over the heal, but it wouldn't have particularly mattered in the end for what skill you used, he would have died either way. And then on this back, I would be buying uh, Boots of Speed, Refillable, and a Dark Seal with Pinks. That's what I would be buying in this lane. And the reason for that is, is uh, Dark Seal gives you a decent amount of mana in the lane phase and nice stacking. Plus, its resale value is still pretty good. Boots will allow you to dodge some of the skill shots. And I like Dark Seals with the refillable potion because the Dark Seal increases the amount of healing that you receive from your potions, which is basically your primary resource in this laning phase. So instead of actually doing the Amp Tome, and I paused that before you bought so that I could tell you what I would do no matter what. Uh, I don't think the Amp Tome is really that great. I think the Dark Seal just gives you way more lane pressure and it's much better. And it doesn't really deviate you from any of your build path at all, since health is your primary resource. Alright, so we're getting back to lane. If you want to zone people, this just seems to be like kind of a general trend. You must, you like hate bushes or something for sure. You should just be standing in brushes the whole time, not standing out in the open like that. It doesn't give you any like leverage in the laning phase. It makes it easier for your opponents to see where you're standing, and uh, it makes it easier for you to get harassed too. Especially against this kind of a lane like MF and Senna, you didn't really get punished that much for it, but your sta standing at minions gives Senna free cues on you, and potentially MF can bounce her cue off of you too. So you're kind of just like giving them free damage in that regard. So you did eventually get into the brush, and bada boom, bada bing, gave you a lot of extra damage and all in potential on the enemy player. Uh, I want to see if there was anything you could really do. I mean, you hit the Q, you're moving and auto attacking. Uh, probably shouldn't have walked over to heal, but I don't think, I think that's just semantics at that point in time. I don't think it would have impacted the kill at all. And just like that, just standing in a brush and having an angle on someone instantly gives you a huge heal advantage and a huge HP advantage in your lane, just by just like that. Also, another thing to note, too, is, is you should have put your pink down over here when you walked over and cleared that pink. That way you always have a pink in the river, so you can always see in the brush. Okay, we're getting it. All right, cool, cool, cool. 
Uh, just making sure that you do that all at once is way better though, for sure. And then it looks like you guys are scared of maybe mid roaming or the jungle roaming. I would have walked up and wanted to at least be cycling my E over and over again. You can do that from pretty long range and it's kind of hard for you to die. But I can see, I guess, you're very scared of getting ganked. So exercising some level of caution. If you're going to do something like this, though, by the way, you should just be standing in a brush. Like once you put a ward down, you should just climb between all of the brushes and just look for anything you can in terms of people overstepping. Because if you were standing in the brushes, you actually could have punished the uh, Senna that was walking up right there. Also, another thing to note, too, is uh, don't make a habit of doing this where you use your heal on someone who has lifesteal. They don't need to be topped off right now, and you haven't hit your Q. actually hurts you a lot more in the long run to lose that extra HP, and it's a bad habit to develop. And then there was no reason for you to use your ulti, basically, at all. Uh, if you didn't know, Soraka's heal heals for uh, substantially more when people are under 40%, just like the Redemption and Revitalized talents that you have, too. So it's very important that you only use your ultimate when people are below a half HP. You get way more value out of that in general. And in fact, actually, missing the ultimate might bite you right here. So you're kiting out. Should be looking for a Q right there. Nice, nice. You're scooting back. Not terrible. And your Lucio was actually able to trade a kill somewhere across the lane. But if you hadn't wasted your ultimate, you definitely could have just used your ulti to keep yourself alive without having to use your barrier. Another thing to note too is I wouldn't buy a second fairy charm. I would have bought another pink so that way when you're pushing up again, you could pink the river brush. It's really not necessary for you to get both of these fairy charms in your laning phase now. Plus on top of that, because you swap to the sweeper, you have no way to drop wards down anymore. So that makes the pinks even more important. Because now you basically have no way to obtain vision whatsoever. And even though you can sweep some vision, you're not a champion that utilizes brush control very well, so having the sweeper is kind of bad. You shouldn't have actually swapped over to the sweeper at all uh, for this scenario, because controlling the brush for you doesn't really matter as much as being able to see other people being able to gank you, since you're not like a Thresher, Morgana, or something like that. You could have made arguments for it if you were something else, but for Soraka, you should just be sitting on that as much as possible. And same situation right here. That heal is fine because he's all inning somebody, but for the most part, you need to kind of cut that habit in general. It's a very bad habit to have. It's so like for this example, right? You have no idea where the Senna is. So whenever you're walking into a brush, it's actually something I do like pretty frequently nowadays. Walk into the brush and just walk out of it. Because a lot of times people who can see you, right? They can see you, you swept the ward, you know there's a ward here. Uh, if there, someone is standing there, they'll just shoot the skill shot as if you're going to walk in a straight line. So make better habits when you do enter brushes, especially when people are, can see you. Just walk in them and walk out of them, like on the edge. That way you most likely bait out these kinds of skill shots, and then you can actually enter in the brush. So if you just walk into the brush right here, it's a really bad habit to develop that will just lead you to getting killed by Threshes, Morganas, Leonas. Like anyone will jump on you doing stuff like that. So in, in the future, whenever you are walking into brushes, walk into them, walk out of them, you'll be in good shape. Also, I don't know where your silence got used. Okay, you got you got used right there. Okay, so there's much something cool on. Also, one side note too is when the Akali was on you, you need to be way greedier with your barrier and wait for yourself to like get a lot lower HP before you end up giving away your barrier. 
That way you can bait in and bait out a lot of things. If you bury your last sliver of damage when someone thinks you're going to die, then they're, you're more likely to get away from them because they'll be walking away from the damage that they're dealing to you. Also, right there, I would have bought the Lucidity Boots. 100%. I would have waited 10 gold and bought the Lucidity Boots. <sighs> CDR is your greatest asset in the early stages. It really shaves off a lot of your ulti, your ulti timing. Now, I'm not quite sure where you're walking to, but I guess maybe you're trying to counter something top. But for the most part, you should just only leverage your ulti in that situation. The primary goal of playing Soraka is just to soak as much experience as possible and try to get to level 11 as fast as possible. That's basically when your character is the strongest. And as you can kind of see right here, right, like you get no value basically at all on your sweeper. Also, pretty much once and once one item comes into play, so like a BF sword, a cutlass, etc., you don't win auto attack trades anymore. So you shouldn't play as if you can. Like right here, like once you hit the Q, you should just walk away. There's no reason to be auto trading with this guy. No one's in range to help you, and you just basically threw away 400 HP for free. You could have just queued, then silenced, and walked away, and you would have been completely fine in that scenario. But now you have to eat both your potions, and you're still going to be down a lot of HP. Same scenario, right? Like, you didn't even know. So, just a habit to have. So, now we've got a ward in brush, and you should just be retaking brushes. So you're watching a dive top. You ulti too early. Remember, a lot of your power is actually pushed into having someone low HP and then ulting. Not only for the mental factor, because people aren't prepared for their HP to go back up, but it, literally you're missing 40%, uh, actually more than that because you have revitalized. You're missing like 55% extra healing just on your ulti. So when that guy gets dove, you shouldn't be using your ultimate when he's at 80% health. See his HP? Let's try to let him go a lot lower. Also, another thing too, whenever you're trading with people, post 6... You should be using your Q first because your Q has travel time and it's harder to hit. And then you should be using silence second. And as, as a side note, you shouldn't even be using your silence anymore offensively in this lane. You should be sitting on the silence because you want to be silencing MF ult. So you actually got pretty lucky here because what should have happened is, is when you got snared, I think it's just because your AD carries so far ahead and they're afraid to get 2v1. You could have easily just gotten MF ultied right here because you used your silence in an incorrect way. And you should be shooting your Q first anyway because your Q has travel time. Because see how you use your Q second and he's actually able to walk away from it. Plus you want to cycle the Q anyway because the Q has a short cooldown. So if you use your Q first then it'll come up faster for when you have a fight, right? And then you have a lot of wasted time just going through the river and basically doing nothing right here rather than always being in lane and having wave control. If you're going to leave the lane for something, it has to be for value. Since you didn't have a ward or anything like that, there was no reason for you to leave the, leave the lane at all. And see how because you don't have the silence again because you're using it offensively, you had to give up a lot more HP. This is also another thing too is just you need to be a bit greedier with using your barrier and like breaking limits on your character. Like, this shouldn't be an immediate barrier right here. Th this shouldn't be a barrier. It should be a barrier if you get to 10% HP and he's looking for a flash or something like that. Because right now, we've pretty much used barrier only one of the three times. It was actually it actually made sense to use barrier. Barrier. <laughs> 
But now, for the most part, you should just take another reset because you're way too damn low. But your Warwick's walking down, so I guess it's okay. I mean, that guy's just inting. Then should cue the back line. Cool, cool. Getting some hits on the turret. You should be hitting the turret still. I'm cycling your spell thieves, by the way. You should have gotten all of your spell thieves on cooldown so that you're making more money. And then you should wait in base for upgrades on lucidity boots now. Just sit here and wait. That's not right. Should definitely not be buying two pinks instead of getting lucidity boots that you're 10 gold away from. The item spikes are way more valuable, and your champion, for the most part, like we said before already, right? Uh, your vision denial is not as big of an important element to your champion as just having vision on the ground and having items in your pocket. So buying these two pinks will most likely be useless in this in this scenario. But if you had an item, you'd be in really good shape. So that guy got tired of living also, and he's going to die. Nice, we've hit the Q. You should use your heal here. Pink is on the ground, and then you're just gonna go back to lane. Also, um, let's talk about let's talk about warding stuff. So all of your wards were basically worthless. So you leave base, right? You're walking around. You have you have wards. You're walking into here. There's no reason to ward here. Your Lucian's already in the brush. You don't need the vision for this. So that's one wasted ward. Sure, it gives you vision of this, but you still shouldn't have had a ward in here because it's actually just a waste in general. So then we push over here, and we're healing him up. Ward over the wall. After he's already out, wasted second wasted ward. This pink, wasted ward. Where is the third ward? I don't even know where the third ward was. Oh, you warded twice in here. Okay, that's where the third ward went. Okay, so lately all three of your wards off of base were useless. So what you should have done is this is how this is how you should have done it, okay? So you see a fight, it's fine to walk over this. Totally fine to walk over this, right? You see a fight, you win this fight, cool, you kill someone. You didn't need to ward here. Then what you should have done is you should have walked back up and around and dropped your green ward, or your pink ward here, walked over, see this brush right here that you, that's in the river? You put a green ward there. Clear it if there's any pinks. If you need to, you can use this blast plant uh, to see any of the vision down uh, vision there. If you get collapse on, you have vision right here. So if someone comes from bottom right, you can walk up the river and get away from them through mid lane. So that's how you can do this safely without without dying to anybody. And if anyone shows mid, just immediately back off if you run into a pink in this brush. After that, what you should do is you should walk back down to bottom with Lucian. You can pink ward your tri bush for defensive vision if you really want to. And then once you get a push going, then you're still sitting on uh, one to two wards and then you can walk up the river and get a ward on the blue buff afterwards because you're already winning the lane you just need to get back in the lane and push this out to make people show think of minions as vision if you have the push you force someone to show in a location which basically is the equivalency of a walking ward that's why i'm always a big advocate for waves before wards that way you make someone show then you can go get the vision safely um as as far as like playing this out this is fine like this is how the, that was completely acceptable but all the way you put down the vision was really really wasteful because now you're on the map right you're on the map your sight stone is finished but it might as well not be finished the wards you have are basically useless all of them have no vision value whatsoever so if you're kind of curious too what you can do is um You can just go here, and I have a bunch of warding tips that basically break down visually all of the places that you want to ward for each of the spots. 
uh, just depending on whatever side of the land you are. These, even though the terrain has changed, are pretty much identical, except for this brush is now available instead of always having to ward this brush. That's pretty much the only difference in terrain that would do anything for it. And in fact, actually what I'll do is I will just throw you the link right there in the Discord. Okay. And that should help you with uh, warding in the early stages. And same situation, right? Walking into brushes, make sure that you're walking away. Actually, what you really should do in a lot of these situations now is if you don't know if anyone's in the brush, what you should do is you should just hang on the top side. If you hang around on the top side while your AD carry clears in the mid lane, uh, middle of the lane, you won't even run into any situations where you could kill yourself in that situation. It's way better. If you have no idea where anyone is, three people could have been sitting in that brush to, to jump on you and kill your ass. So if you don't know where anyone is standing, just stand on this top side right here and stay away from it uh, until the wave is start pushing, right? Because then the wave is pushing, one person has to show, and then you can check the brushes with your base or whatever. And worst case scenario, right, you run into the center that's sitting here, but boom, you and your Lucian can create the trade triangle on him instead. And then always take over the brushes once you get the push. That way you don't have to be checking any of these brushes yourself. So, the gank is coming. You hit the Q. You should just be fine right here. You don't have to do anything. Nice, nice. Primary thing that you always want to do, and you did it well there, is just always make sure that you're trying to get a, a hit command, on, a hit confirm on your Q. That will solve like a lot of your issues when getting all in because it will heal you a ton. And, unfor and unfortunately for them, your Lucian is so far ahead, he's popping off. Also, another thing to note too, uh, pay attention to healing debuffs. So, well, we buried again, nothing. And he's going in on him. And here's DPS in. So let's do a couple of things after I watch you most likely die. Okay. So let's tackle let's tackle a lot of things because uh, it's good that we're seeing the same problems happen over and over again because they're they're fixable, right? So. Number one, this was kind of like a pet peeve of mine. Pay attention to the healing debuff if you just wait literally one two three if you just wait two seconds then the healing debuff is off of him and you get two times the healing um next as we've kind of seen from the game right you've pretty much only had one barrier that was necessary not and so what you need to be doing is is uh maybe what you need to do is create a uh, checklist scenario for what when you need to use barrier so one is definitely under 50 percent shouldn't be using barrier uh before under 50 percent unless it's like a level one trade where you're just trying to get an hp advantage which is completely different so like uh in this scenario right you use the heal and you ulti right here which is fine that, that's totally fine to get your hp back up and then you barrier nothing right like you're already plenty of hp you don't need to bury this at all so now you've in, you began and engage on a you hit a Q, perfect. You're cutting out. You've tossed your teammate the heal. You're making sure you're not too stacked on him. Everything's going pretty well. So this guy jumps in on him, right? And we've used our silence. We're cutting backwards. You've used your heal. Imagine if you had barrier right now. So you've hit that, right? They're all inning him. And what you should be doing right now is you should be spamming W on your teammate because you need to be getting another cycle of HP through to him so that you can continue cutting. The next thing is, is after you give this guy the heal, you should be going up and forward. You need to pay attention to what's going on on the map. So right, we have the Akali moving here, and this is the only guy blocking you from getting to your Warwick. On top of that, even if the Warwick wasn't here, if the Akali is back here, to go through him is too taxing, you should definitely go this way, through up and around. So what you should be doing is spamming your W, and you need to make a good habit of this, because usually in tight situations like this, where someone is very low HP, the difference between keeping them alive and not, is how how hard and how fast you're spamming your W. Because you're not even going to heal this guy again. You're going to walk, you're going to run away. What you should have done is kept going forward with him and running forward. 
because then you would have been able to collide with your <coughs> collide with your Warwick, and you wouldn't have even died in that scenario. So next, I assume you're trying to build a redemption. All right. So instead of building the bracer, what you should have done is gotten the, um, you know, bought the boots, fine, and then get the full forbidden idol, which is 800 gold. It's way it's way more uh, stat efficient than getting this bracer because now you're just sitting on a fairy charm, uh, and now you just sold your health potion for that. It, it's just not worth it. The bracer is 50 extra HP and a little bit of HP regen. And it's base HP regen, and if you didn't know, Sorak has the lowest base HP regen in the entire game. It gives you like, like buying that item gave you 50 health and one HP per five, and you and you sold the refillable potion for it, which is super not worth. So next is uh, talking about vision, and uh, I think I won't go too in depth with it because most of it is just through the um, guides that I I have written. So I'd rather you just referendum them. But you should be walking mid right now. You should be walking mid and getting vision down around mid. So whatever objective is coming up next is pretty much what you play for. So if the Rift Herald is up, getting topside vision is really really good. If the dragon is coming up in a minute or two, then getting botside vision is really really good. In this game too, it's kind of like. Uh, it's just a heaven lands for you because I uh, your ribbon is winning, so you can easily just go mid, help push this out, and then step into the jungle and get all this wards down because he's already killed two turrets. Pretty much um, when it comes to getting vision down on a winning game, it's just a ward in mid and then a ward in two brushes. So this brush and this brush, hopefully you can see my cursors, and then if it's not that, then it's this brush and this brush. Always a ward down mid though. That's the that's the most important thing. Cuz one of the things too is is you're you're not obtaining any vision down at all. And because you have no vision down here, right? Four people are able to collapse on you and kill you for free. So instead of instead of doing all of this, your mid lane right you get a ward mid you walk down you drop wards here you have the way of pushing in here and you have a bunch of this ward vision then you'll know that these people could potentially collapse on you having outer vision is really really important uh, otherwise you'll just end up doing a lot of dumb shit like this oh being over aggressive and then losing because of it if you can, the most ideal scenario too is to just spam ping like your AD carry to walk with you, because you want you technically in this scenario want you you and your AD carry mid to push that out so you can get vision down. <clears throat> so all right, so we're gonna walk all the way over to this fight. And we have ulti. So once again, right, we want our teammates to be low on HP. We shouldn't be ulting for assists. It's really, really a waste. So make sure that your cursor is over the players, getting the info as best you can before you use your ulti. Because that was just uh, not not helpful in any way. It wasn't like lane. It wasn't changing any scenario, and it was. Now it's on cooldown. And that cooldown is pretty important for you to keep yourself alive as much it is as it is to keep your teammates alive. So now you have the push going. You don't need to ward like this. You can just walk up, hit this plant, walk up, and then see where people are standing and get much deeper vision than this. There's no reason to get a shallow shallow ward like that after winning a fight, killing somebody, and having pressure. So you ended up getting the ward anyway. But now you have this wasted ward right here that does nothing for you again. So really what you should be doing now is you shouldn't have moved your pink here. The reason for that is because bot side doesn't matter anymore. Uh, Baron is up. You've just taken the dragon. There's five minutes till the next dragon. This ward is useless. So what you should have done is not waste your money doing that. You should just reset right now. Finish your redemption at 650 gold. And then uh, you'd have one pink. And then you're just going to go back mid, push it out, get wards top side, and start playing for the Baron. See, all of what you're doing is just wasted time. 
And the reason why I can tell you it's wasted time, Yi just showed right here, send a walk down the river, MF is bottom. You don't need to be wasting your time doing any of this right now. You need to be resetting, getting the wards and your items, and then pushing this out and reestablishing a whole line. There's no way that the enemy players can do Baron whatsoever. So you want to make sure that you're just using your time very efficiently so that you can get everything set up without uh, losing any of your time. Because now also because you've wasted that pink on the side, right? You no longer have a pink for the Baron because you couldn't afford it. All right, so we're walking off of mid. No reason to, re reason to ward here either. So remember, minions are vision. So you have ward a ward on this side, right? So what you do is, is you just don't walk this side and you just stand on the bottom side you push this in then multiple people will show then you can ping assist me if you need to and you can walk and clear this bush because this ward right here should actually be a ward right here because what you want to do is have access to a cleared line brush and vision of seeing potentially people walking down mid or walk or approaching this brush right so that way you can make catches Because now we basically have two wards doing the same exact job. And this ward is actually pretty bad for the most part because now it doesn't cover the mid lane. It only covers if people are entering from the top side. Which what you should be doing is, is getting deeper vision maybe right here, maybe on the ramp, or maybe right here. Depending on how comfortable you are walking up, depending on how many people show in mid. And that will give you the vision for whether or not someone's going to enter through the top side to try and contest over this wall. You don't need this ward right here. It's a waste. Because right now, see your three wards, boom, boom, boom. Basically, they do nothing. They don't give any information. That This information you're getting from the people walking over to this play is gained from just the minions in the wave. Your wards don't do anything for it. So, I mean, your Lucian basically has god mode at this point in time. He is just going to walk around and kill everyone for you regardless of the circumstances. And this is also a waste. You just waste your ultimate once again. And now that you have the push, and now that you've pushed everyone out, what I would do is walk over here, drop a ward down here, then walk over here and put a ward down here. Because you now have pushed everyone out and you can safely put down the wards, right? Because you've pushed everyone out. You should just be dumping vision down wherever it's closest and the best for you. So since you care about the Baron vision, then that would be the best idea. This ward is okay, but I'm not as big of a fan as that ward right over there, because then you can make traps in the jungle way safer. And you definitely needed a ward down lane, so you can see how many people are reinforcing. So whenever you do Baron, you don't want to do exactly what you're doing right now. So you see this? You see how when you're standing here, you're taking residual damage? You want to be standing max range, walking in, shooting a Q, and walking away. You do not want to be sitting here and auto-attacking. You're just losing life for free. It's something very specific to Soraka because you use health as a resource, so you don't want to actually be doing that whenever uh, you're doing Baron. That would have been a great time to have your ultimate, by the way. So now we're sitting max range, which is good by you. You're tossing heals to whoever's in range. Nice Q. You should be playing tighter on your teammate, though. Utilize the movement speed that you get from your Q more and more. So you should be walking in and, in and back, and you just shouldn't have been healing that guy at all. So let's talk about like a couple of things, right? Positioning and how you like leverage where you're standing. So you're healing and peeling backwards. Your Lucian's going forwards. You're walking up. And try a silence can't actually quite make it so we actually get a good barrier here this is a good barrier but you didn't need to flash afterwards and then after that you're standing max range and you're shooting cues this, this is all good stuff so you, you're healing him you're chilling max range you're still staying near the fight this is very important because you need to be you, you know leveraging the in and outs of healing so you hit another Q. You silence, he scoots back, you toss him another heal. Everything is fine so far. You should shoot one more Q right here. Perfect, you hit it. This guy is dying, this guy is not dying. You need to not heal this guy. This guy is the one you need to keep alive. And then I would be building a uh, Mikhail's. 
I personally like Mikhail's way more because it gives you 20% extra healing. Even if there's not a lot of CC to break out, break people out of, it's a really, really OP item, especially because it also bolsters the redemption healing. Also, I couldn't find where you use your redemption, but you used it, and I don't think it was very good. So let's make sure that we're trying to... Pretty much the way you ideally want a scenario to happen is a fight breaks out, you use your redemption, and as your redemption is going off, you use your ultimate, because it's instant cast, right? While the redemption's going off, to then keep someone alive. So, you're walking over to this fight. You pretty much should just walk over and heal the Malzahar. You're pinging on your way, that's good. Good, good, good. This. This is not necessary. You don't need to be using your redemption like that when there's no damage coming in. And you never healed the Malzahar, so he ended up dying also. You could have uh, you could have also made an argument for just dropping the redemption to heal your Malzahar. That would have also been an acceptable thing, too. And then there's fruits over here. <sighs> See all that residual damage, though, that you're just taking for free? Your character doesn't tr contribute enough damage to make it worthwhile for you to lose all that HP. And I say that just as a habit development. It doesn't matter in this particular scenario, but it actually did when the Yi came over earlier because it made you significantly lower, and because of that, you weren't able to play comfortably next to Lucian, and he actually died because of it. So oh, we're walking over to Dragon. Reminder, you want to use your silence on stuff. So, like, for example, use your silence on Warwick Ultimate or Malzahar Ultimate. These are really, really good ulti like spells to use it on. If not, you need to at least wait till someone comes in or uses their dash forward. So, fight breaks out, right? And they're starting to walk over. You need to at least wait for the Silas or the Yi to press their engage button before you use your silence. You want to be disrupting actually something or layering it with CC. Right now, see here, if this Silas comes in, you put a Silence down on him, not only do you stop the Warwick Ultimate, but then your Warwick Ultimate also sets up a Snare on top of it, which is really, really good. So we're healing people up. This would also be a great time to have Redemption, by the way. We're just cutting backwards. You're doing a good job hitting the Qs. Those are all positives. There's a Fruit right here. There we go. We got good value out of the barrier. You're cutting out. Perfect. Well played. That was super good by you. And then you want to try to get to Lucian, but no dice on that. And nice. Now you can just push in mid. Um, and then when you're exiting, I just ward down the mid lane. That way you can kind of see if anyone's coming over to you at all. And it's a really, really deep ward that's hard to get access to unless you win a big fight. This ward isn't nearly as valuable as the mid lane ward. And we're just exiting. I would assume this is just a full reset, right? Oh, no, it's not. Okay. See, like, that's not a bad redemption. Because there's multiple people going off. And then that's a good ulti. Because it's used to keep people alive before the redemption goes off. So you shouldn't be resetting right here, by the way. You have three of your team... You've just killed two players. You have Baron. Three of your teammates are pushing right now. You shouldn't be resetting. You should be playing with them. Even if it's a bad idea, it's much better to play... Do a bad idea with a bunch of people than it is to let people half-ass it. Because now they're going to get collapsed on and they could potentially die for sure. And we are walking across the map now. Lucian died mid too. So pretty much if neither neutral objective is up, I just always pick the top side because it's just harder to get the vision down in top side without uh, having a bunch of pressure on the map. So what you should have done here is after everyone died, you already walked into the top side. Just get wards here, ward here, and ward down mid lane. And boom, you've lit it up with a Christmas tree. Uh, that way you have top pressure again. 
The reason for that too is, is um, I know the dragon's a little bit faster than the Baron, but this allows you to reestablish vision in the top side way easier in the future by having vision there already. So it means you can step up more aggressively in the top side for the future. Because right now you're just kind of like meandering, walking around. You don't have any vision, right? See, we have no vision established on either side right now, even though they've actually are just stuck perpetually in the base. So make sure that you get some wards down when you have opportunities like that. So I assume we're going to just walk around aimlessly until a neutral objective spawns or someone kills themselves, which he did. Da, 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 da. All right, so we got the dragon. Waves pushing in mid. Looks like we're forcing something down here. I mean, that guy just seems like a free kill. Seems like he's tilted. So we're pushing in. See how much better this looks when he engages and then you just dump a silence and he can't run away. Also try to silence it a little bit further away from him when he's running away so it's a little bit harder for him to get out. And then, so here's like an easy way to gauge whether or not you need to use redemption. Are other people following this play? The answer is no, right? Like, no one else is following it. So you don't need to dump your redemption here. It's a wasted redemption. You have ult and barrier. You have lots of extra spare time to react and respond to something. So make sure that you're being a bit more greedy with your uh, cooldowns, especially because you heal just way more when people are low. All right, so we're kiting backwards right now. We're healing everybody we can. This is why, like, having your cooldowns is pretty important, right? Because if you have redemption in this fight, the silence is fine. If you have the redemption in the fight, then it, it's a completely different fight. I think also you might have missed your ult. I'm not completely sure yet. It's hard for me to tell. Oh, yeah, you did. If you just run in a straight line, by the way, you're you're safe. There's no reason for you to walk up like that because you're actually walking towards him when you do that. Da 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 da. -da. All right, so you're walking over, doing a baron. There's no damage coming in again. Remember, reminder: your redemption needs to get value. You didn't get any value from the redemption. You need to wait till people start coming in and actually dealing damage to your team. It's okay, because you, you can use your ulti, then you can heal, and uh, or you can use the redemption, you can ulti, and then heal people the entire time. Right now, you're not tight enough on any of your carries. It's like, the fight breaks out, right? This is how the fight should work. The fight breaks out. Where did the silence go? You shouldn't silence anything. There's no reason to randomly silence over the wall. That's that's a no-no for sure. That 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 cooldown is very important in the later stages of fighting. So what should have happened, this Silas comes in, he gets silenced, and he just dies. There's nothing this player can do. He just dies instantly. After that, you see that people are cutting down from the bottom side. So you need to be playing tight on your carries. You need to be standing tight on them and not using the redemption. This is bad what you're doing right now is really really bad because now you've walked away and now you're out of range of the lucian to heal him see how he's been ki he's kiting away and you're not kiting with him you want to be you basically want to be like a buddy like a buddy buddy system especially with someone who has 15 20 kills you want to be doing everything you can to keep him alive because if you're not stacked on top of him being able to just literally spam w on cooldown to keep him alive he will die instantly Okay, use the alt too early again. You should be healing him the whole time.
Okay, so other things, right? So you get the kill here, you get this kill here. You should just be on top of him, spamming your W. If your W spends even half a second up, off cooldown, that's almost two seconds. That was a whole nother heal that you basically lost right there. In the later stages of the game, it's actually very, very important when you get to like the CDR to be healing your teammates all the time. And then after that happened, right, he's dead, you should be healing him. It's only a two second cooldown. You should be dumping heals into the Malzahar. Also, I wouldn't have, you don't want to be using your ult right here. This is a wasted ult. It's he's not under 50% HP, so you lost a bunch of extra healing on it. Plus, on top of that, he has GA. Let him be dipping way under his 50% health bar before you're casting your heal. So if you cast your ulti here, his health goes back up to about here, and it buys you time to press W again. Also, as you get into late game scenarios, your uh, W should actually take priority over your Q, not the other way around, because the healing over time is irrelevant uh, as the game goes on. Q is a luxury, not a requirement anymore. So like when you're healing this player, right? You should be heal, you should be heal, not Q, not Q, heal, right here. Then you would have kept him alive for another heal cycle. And then you should be healing him, but you're not next to him anymore, right? Because you've walked over here, instead of being tight on your teammate for the buddy buddy system. And then you should heal, and then you should heal him again. That's another whole second. So primary things that I just want to tackle on this lesson are as follows. Uh, number one, uh, bushes. Make sure to take advantage of standing in brushes so that you can be trading more effectively. Don't give your teammates or your opponents trade triangles. Uh, next, potions. Use potions early to keep yourself topped off. That way you can play more aggressively. Uh, three, barrier. You need to be more greedy with your barrier and use it at way lower HP. You basically used barrier a lot and got almost no value out of it at all. Just in general, it seems like you're relatively comfortable with shooting your cues and kiting. That's super positive. But what you need to start working on is the buddy buddy system and being really more precise and letting people drop a lot more HP uh, and then propping them up with redemptions and ulties because we're using them too early and ineffectively a lot of the time in a lot of team fights. And also silences. Be greedier with your silences. Wait for people to use their engage tools first or use it on top of a crowd control. This was a really easy game to basically do nothing. Wait for a Warwick or a Malzahar ulti and just put a silence down on him about a, a second or a second and a half into it. Boom, that guy's never moving and he's dead. Those are the primary things that I want you to work on for the future. But there's still some really good positive things on it. Um, just want to emphasize the things that you want to be doing in the future though. Anyway, I hope this helped, and uh, I'll see you next time. Peace.